everybody. I'm Jessica J, and my husband and I have an urban garden here in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. In four and a half weeks, it's going to be time for us to start planting the garden. Since today is April 18th, I thought I better start planning. I don't know how many times I've gone to the store and went to find my favorite seed varieties and they were either all sold out or they just didn't order them in that year. So, bring you on in the house, show you some of the seeds. Now this is another reason why it's good to plan ahead. Being so that you don't buy a whole bunch of seeds that you don't even use. These are from last year and look, I didn't even plant them. So, it's time to get organized and let's get to it. This video today is going to be one in a series about our urban garden. And today's video is going to be all about seed varieties and which ones are my favorites and why. When a person gets to the home and garden store and they see all the seeds, it can be so tempting to just buy them all. But what happens is the person can waste a lot of money and if you're new to gardening, how do you ever decide where to start? So when our children were growing up, my husband and I went probably about 20 years with no garden at all because we used to like to go to the lake a lot and it's pretty hard to be weeding your garden from the lake. But we were pretty lucky when we decided to start taking up gardening again that both my husband and I had grown up with parents who used to garden a lot and we used to help. So we had that sort of uh, knowledge about gardening that came back to us second nature once we started again. But we're also very lucky that I have an aunt and uncle who are avid gardeners who grow a fabulous garden. And when we started gardening a few years ago again, I phoned him up and I was like, uncle, what do you do in your garden? When do you plant and what do you plant? Because I want my garden to be just like yours. Anyways, so he helped us out and we got going with our gardening again and we've been really pleased. But something I've noticed is that gardening is like an art form and each person's garden is like an original piece of art because there are no two gardens even here in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, that are the same. There's no two gardens in Canada or anywhere in the world that are the same because every person is going to do things a little differently. Some people are going to choose certain varieties and other people are gonna to choose totally different varieties. Some people like to grow more vegetables. Some people only want flowers. So you get this really unique creative piece in your backyard that you can go out and enjoy every day and be connected to nature with and gardening is an amazing amazing experience but I realize that not everybody is as fortunate to have grown up with a parent who gardened or have mentors like I do that I can just phone up and say what do you do so I decided I'm going to make these YouTube videos also geared towards beginners or quite geared towards beginners. But I think experienced gardeners will also find these videos really, really interesting for the very reason that there are no two gardens that are alike. Um, I can go two blocks down and my neighbor is going to have a completely different soil type in their backyard than I do. Or there are parts of Saskatchewan that have very, very solid clay-like soil other parts are very sandy and so on. So what works for one person isn't necessarily going to work for the other person. And that's why even experienced gardeners may enjoy learning about something different that other people do. And I would really love to hear from the experienced gardeners and from the beginners who have questions who say that wasn't detailed enough or I would like to know more. So let's get started and I will show you some of my favorite seed varieties. The first one up is asparagus. 
Now when it comes to picking your seeds, the brand name isn't necessarily what's important or even what store it's from or anything like that. What's important is the variety. And in this case, we have Viking variety asparagus seeds that I started straight out in the garden with a lot of success. Asparagus is a perennial and another variety of asparagus that I found worked well is called Mary Washington. Not Martha Washington, but Mary Washington. And when you get to the store, if you've ever seen these Asian vegetables and wondered <clears throat> if they are any good or not, my husband and I grew these. They had fairly poor germination and I'm thinking it had to do at the time with our soil temperature. But if you like radishes, these were quite good vegetables. This one grew really large, like each radish was the size of a potato. And if you need any ideas about how to use radishes, we love ours roasted. Especially if you want an alternative to potatoes, roasted or stir fried radishes are delicious. Beets. This is a classic example of why it's important to journal which seed varieties you planted each year so that you can keep track which ones you like or not. Because a couple years ago, my husband and I planted beets that we loved and they were these huge giant beets. I'll put a picture here for you to see. But we can't remember what variety they were. But I do remember planting these and liking them. These are sort of a decorative type of beet that have the rings that show and the rings in real life don't show up quite as prominently as they do here in this photo but it was pretty similar and they made a really nice beat for fresh salads. These are the ones I really like for pickling. Bull's blood. They make a nice pickled beet. They're also really good raw in salads. If you've never had beets in a salad before, check it out. Oh, and don't forget to use the greens. For your salads as well. Oh, some more Asian vegetables that we really liked. These were awesome and they germinated wonderfully and by July 20th or so last year we were eating these greens in our salads and they were delicious. They're also great stir-fried so my husband and I are definitely going to be growing these ones again. They're really good. Cucumbers. I do not start my cucumbers in the house. I just plant the seeds out in the garden and around May long weekend. And some of my favorite varieties for cucumber are these ones here. English Long Telegraph. We trellis our cucumbers and these ones are Awesome. Some other cucumbers that we like are straight eights. And if you're going to make pickles, these ones work good. They're called bush pickle. They're the sort of spiky ones that if you might remember your grandma growing. There's also these ones here that I liked. And what I liked about them is they mature fairly quickly. 50 days. So that's another thing you can look at when you're buying your seeds is how many days will it be from the time you plant until maturity? And here in Saskatchewan, we have such a short growing season. You're going to want to make sure that you're probably never buying anything that takes longer than 85 days to mature unless you started in the house sooner or you have a greenhouse. Another thing I like to grow is dill. Dill is the herb that most people forget about to use in their cooking. When you make homemade soups or rice dishes, dill is delicious. <gasps> On baked potatoes or boiled potatoes with sour cream, num. So dill Let's see what varieties we have here. Fern leaf and Ducat dill. Those are two of my favorites.
I also really like these heritage brand seeds. So I know I said I wasn't necessarily brand loyal or specific, but I find that heritage seeds have a really good amount of seeds in the package for the price. But these ones, this heritage dill, it doesn't actually say what variety it is. And that part I didn't like so much. And they say 70 days to maturity on the back of the package. Where the Ducat dill, it said 45 days. So I'm not sure if they are talking about when the leaves will be ready to harvest or if they're referring to when the seeds will be ready to harvest. Something else we love to grow are greens of different types and anything like mustards or colliards, if you see those, I better back up, if you see those at the store, those are mostly grown for greens which you can use in salads or saute them into a side dish. So for example, if you saute some onions and you cook some quinoa or something, what you can do is chop the greens up, throw them into the pan, toss in the cooked quinoa, put some salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of dill and mm, awesome side dish. So we like to grow a lot of greens. And I sometimes uh, saute them and freeze them so that later in the winter, I can pull out some frozen greens and pop them into a soup or a side dish as well, like a rice dish or quinoa dish like I was explaining earlier. Lettuce. I think our favorite variety of lettuce to grow in the garden is romaine. The reason being is some of the other salad varieties that are leafy, like these, I find them really, really hard to wash and sometimes they taste bitter. So they are not our favorite at all. But romaine is the one we love to plant the most. I also really, really like iceberg. It's great. It just takes a little bit longer to grow. Kale. The one I like the best is called Siberian Improved Dwarf. I really do prefer it quite a bit more than something like Dwarf Green Curled. The dwarf green curled is a lot tougher and it's good in cooked dishes, but if you want some kale for salads or smoothies, I would grow this one. Swiss chard, more greens. We really liked this one called Neon Lights Blend because it was so colorful. It was beautiful in the garden too. Some of our favorite greens are spinach. And I think my favorite is this one called King of Denmark. But another one that we really, really liked was the spinach from this heritage brand and I don't have a package of it right now I don't think but these are the heritage brand seeds and they have a spinach one that was very very good as well unfortunately with the heritage brand I, oh I know I remember it was Bloomsdale Bloomsdale spinach it was good as well we really liked it Something else that's a nice colorful Swiss chard that you can grow is this one called rhubarb. In fact, the leaves look so much like rhubarb, one of my friends thought she had accidentally planted a rhubarb plant. But it's a Swiss chard, which is also a green that you can use sauteed. It's quite a strong tasting green for salads, so this one is usually used in cooking. 
with butter and salt and pepper. It's delicious. Here's a package of Bloomsdale spinach for you to check out. I would definitely plant that one. Parsnips. Now, if you've never had parsnips, consider giving them a chance. They are also super delicious roasted. And we grew both these types and had success with both of them. The first one's called Hollow Crown, and this one is called Hamburg Rooted. On the package, it usually says you should soak parsnip seeds the, for the night before you plant them, and I would highly recommend doing that. You will have better germination that way. Radishes. We like these heritage seeds. They are called Cherry Bell, and the earlier you can plant your radishes in the year and get some going, the better throughout the year. If you keep trying to make more plantings of radishes, you're usually going to get those little worms in them, which is kind of disappointing. Here's another kind we liked growing called Crimson Giant. Ah, turnips. Same. You need to give turnips a chance. And sometimes I think it might be uh, the variety you may have eaten as a child. Purple Top white turnips. These, I think, are the type that most people perhaps do not like. They are quite sharp tasting. Same with these early snowball turnips. They're quite sharp, almost like a radish, and I can see maybe why some people don't like them. But if you've never tried a sweet Laurentian rutabaga, you've got to give it a chance. We love, like absolutely love, these raw. And when I get a craving for potato chips, what I do instead is peel one of these and slice it in round slices and use it to dip into my guacamole or um, the girls love dipping them into salsa, and things like that, because they have a very, very mild flavor when they're raw, almost like kohlrabi, but even more mild. So I would definitely, definitely give these sweet Laurentians a chance and hopefully you love them as much as we do. And these ones are actually really good cooked as well. You can mash them with a little bit of butter and salt and pepper and they are so delicious in comparison to a purple top turnip. So I hope that helps. We grow all the types because my husband actually really likes turnips, but I just like the rutabagas the most. What else do we got here? Spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash in the store is so expensive. We planted four spaghetti squash seeds in a little tiny plot of soil alongside our fence because we have a chain link fence. The spaghetti squash plants trellised up, trellised up the fence and we literally got 50 nice sized spaghetti squashes. You're going to need a bit of room to grow them if you don't have a place to trellis them, then you might not even want to grow spaghetti squash in an urban garden because they, they spread out and take a lot of room. But if you can put them on a pole or on a trellis, go for it and maybe only plant one or two seeds, literally, that's all you're going to need. And I don't think these really had a variety. This one says winter squash on it. And this one just says, well, this one did say spaghetti pasta, but if you can get them that, um, or find a package of seeds where on the picture it looks like a spaghetti squash, give it a try. We had so many, like I said, that, uh, we actually had to cook some of them up and freeze the flesh. And that worked pretty good, but it was pretty um, watery to eat after, but I had different ways that I could use to cook it up and throw it in soups. I threw it in our chilies and things like that. It was really good. And onions. Right now, they have these onion sets at Canadian Tire. 
and these are my absolute favorite. Does it say a variety? Not really, you see? I don't like that when they do that. It just says red onion or white onion sets. And they come from Brandon, Manitoba. These are good, like so good. I hate nothing more than buying onions and they clump together almost like garlic. Has anybody ever done, grown those before? And then they get full of worms. Not these ones. And these ones make nice round onions just like the ones at the store. Here's another type of squash that I found was quite good. It was a zucchini-like squash actually and I would pick it when it was small to use sauteed in side dishes with mushrooms and onions. It was really good. And zucchini. I like sometimes planting a few different varieties just to see which ones will do good. We really, really enjoy these yellow ones called Gold Rush. Again, I like to pick them small and dice them up into sautés. There's Elite Hybrid and Black Zucchini, and both of these were also good. Definitely, I would buy them again. Herbs. Definitely don't be afraid to give herbs a try. And they can be started ahead of time in pots in the house. In the past, I've grown oregano. These, this one says it takes 85 days to maturity, and that's why it's nice to start it ahead. But if you move it out into that garden, it's going to do amazingly well. More so than in a pot. But if you do want to grow them in a pot on your deck, make sure you're watering it every day and you have a well-drained pot. Some other herbs that I grew were peppermint, thyme, so, can't remember, let me think on it. Some other herbs that I like to grow were garlic chives. You can definitely start these um, earlier in the house because when they come up, they're just like the tiniest little hairs. And in the garden, they're so fragile, but they, you know, once they're about this tall even, you can plant them outside. And before you know it, you're gonna have a nice clump of chives that comes up every year as a perennial. So don't till them back under. It actually takes them just a couple years to get going. And then every spring, you're gonna have like this nice clump of chives growing up. So regular chives and garlic chives, I would recommend both of them. Here is some basil that I liked. It's called, they're both different varieties of red basil. This one's opal and red reuben. Both winners, but they both take quite a few days to mature. This one's 80 days. I'm not sure about this one. Oh, 80 days as well. Start these ahead of time in the house. Actually, right now would be the time to be starting them. Cilantro, we love cilantro. And this is one of my favorite types, but it doesn't list the variety. Now why I like it is if you can find cilantro that has this shape of a leaf, it is really good. I have grown a type of cilantro before that even when it's young, it has a very ferny leaf. I did not like the taste of it. Most cilantro, once it grows tall, the top of the plants will also get ferny and that's normal. But if you can find some that on the picture, it looks a lot like parsley go for it you won't regret it if you like cilantro that is regular garden peas for eating we really like these Lincoln homesteads awesome same with these green arrow and when it comes to beans we like yellow beans if you've never grown yellow beans before Give them a try because they are so delicious. And these just produced like crazy. We couldn't believe how many yellow beans we had for a garden or from a garden in the city. I mean, our garden in our backyard is not very big. And I 
think we had 12 gallons of yellow beans. So just buy one package, you won't need very many. Unless you're on an acreage and you're starting a farmer's market or something. Carrots, these are the ones. I'm not even going to talk about a different variety of carrots because this is it, the best. We love them. And thanks to my Uncle Lorenzo who told me about this variety, they're called Scarlet Nantes. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but those are them. And when it comes to different companies, but the same variety, here is just an example for you to see what I mean. So for example, these are both mustard greens and they're both Florida broadleaf, but look how different they look in the photo. So I try to go by the look, no, I try to go by the variety and not how the photo looks when I pick out my seeds. Tomatoes, what do I buy? I like to buy my tomatoes started ahead of time at a greenhouse. I will have a separate video probably in the future about the reasons why for that. But the varieties that I like the best are, oh, Better Boy and Early Girl. I know they're not heritage varieties, or at least I don't think they are, but they are my favorite. Also Beefsteak, and those would be for large red tomatoes. There is a variety of small little cherry tomatoes called Sweet 100s that I really like. And when it comes to peppers, I also buy my peppers started ahead of time at the greenhouse. I like any type that is a bell pepper. And if you like hot peppers, one variety to go for is the Hungarian hot. What else do I buy pre-started? I think that might be all. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. As I said earlier, this is one of a series. I'm going to be having all sorts of future videos with all types of different discussions about my urban garden. We'll also be taking the camera outdoors and showing you the garden as we plant, as we tend the garden and into harvest time. I don't know how many videos will be upcoming, but we'll just have to wait and see. So please subscribe. Don't forget to like. And if you have any questions, please type them below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks very much for watching and have a really great night. See you.